both the forms of oppression that anyone could possibly imagine. Um, I, at a young age, um, not too, too young, but at the age of 10, I, I was put into a residential school. And um, I don't speak about that too much too often because uh, it, it's not an easy thing to talk about. And I just want to, to uh, ask you something that uh, when you meet a residential school survivor, is, is don't ask too many questions. Don't push us too far because it's a very difficult, uh, dark period of our lives that we only can speak about in willingly as I am now. We shouldn't be asked direct questions. We shouldn't be harassed about the topic unless you are very willingly. Because I've experienced, as a survivor myself, um, speaking to um, my son's grandmother um, in Saskatchewan when I first met her and mentioned it and, and immediately she just started crying and she said, you know what, I just can't talk about it. And that's where many of us are, we just cannot talk about it and we shouldn't be pushed to do that. And I, I was recently done that, the same thing kind of thing happened to me and I had the same kind of uh, reaction. It, it's just very difficult. So I just ask you to treat us with some respect. It's not uh, something that is easily forgotten. Well, in fact, it will never be forgotten. But uh, many of us, nevertheless, will carry that hurt throughout our lives. And um, nevertheless, we become very productive people and, and have very meaningful lives. And I today want to honor any residential school survivors who may be here today. And I thank you and thank you from the bottom of my heart and uh, put my love to you and, uh, and everything in your life and your children because our children are impacted as well. But that's